let's talk about what causes it and then the continuum of what's happening underneath with the physiology as somebody continues to become more insulin resistant. So I like to call it the yellow brick road of insulin resistance. We have a graphic somewhere on our Instagram account about that. And in your 20s and 30s, you can get away with a lot. Uh, You can drink, you can stay up late, you can party, you can eat a bunch, and you're probably not going to gain that much weight. Um, But what's happening is your insulin levels are still rising. So the research has shown that fasting insulin can predict type 2 diabetes up to two decades before fasting glucose. Most physicians are not checking fasting insulin. They're just checking glucose. So people are kind of surprised when, oh, I have diabetes now. Well, if you had been checking your insulin, you would have had a 20-year heads up on that and 20 years to change your lifestyle. So in their 20s, they probably don't really experience much besides maybe some low energy. Maybe they're slowly starting to gain weight. Maybe they're having like brain fog, like, oh, I feel like I should be sharper than I am. Um, But then when you get to your 30s and your 40s, If you haven't dialed in your stress, your sleep, your nutrition, and your physical activity, you will start to gain weight. You will start to have symptoms of insulin resistance, maybe not the diagnostic criteria yet. So we're going to continue to see that weight gain as the primary symptom. Sometimes swelling easily can be a sign of insulin resistance as well, especially after a high-carb meal. Um, But then 40s to 50s, that's really where those preclinical signs are going to turn into clinical signs. You're going to get diagnosed with high blood sugars, prediabetes, and you have to look at your own labs. I have a client once, and she said she was prediabetic for years, and her doctor only wrote excellent on her blood work, did not address the prediabetic blood glucose level at all. And so once she started looking at her own lab, she realized, oh my gosh, I've been pre-diabetic for years and my doctor didn't say anything to me. Your doctor's looking for red flags, not optimal health parameters, unless they're a functional medicine doctor, likely. Not, not all of them, but that's kind of the standard of practice these days. So high blood sugar, right? Anything really over 90 fasting, that's a little bit concerning to me. Because there's normal and there's optimal. And I think Levels Health is doing such a good job of bringing to light the difference between normal and optimal blood glucose levels. So it's a little bit hard because if you're checking it first thing in the morning, Jesse, there's that cortisol response. Um, And so your blood sugar will be a little bit higher within the first 90 minutes to two hours of awakening. So if you can check it at like 10 or 11 a.m. fasting, that's going to be a better true marker of your fasting glucose level. But 100 to 125 is technically pre-diabetic. And then 126 or higher is diabetic. And then there's A1C levels associated with that as well. Um, But when you're in your 40s and 50s, you're going to see the blood sugar starting to rise. You're going to see your blood pressure starting to rise. Your doctor might suggest that you go on a blood pressure medication or you're going to see your cholesterol start to rise, which is ridiculous. Do not accept a statin based on total cholesterol or LDL cholesterol. Read Dr. Lustig's book, The Metabolical. That really explains it well. Um, Those would be some of the main symptoms. Abdominal obesity. Um, We can't just look at, we cannot rely on BMI. So many children are metabolically unhealthy and the doctor is not doing anything about it because their BMI is okay. Well, if you look at a kid, you can tell if that, that kid is skinny fat. Okay. Thin. It's called tofi. So thin on the inside. What is it? Tofu, tofi, thin inside, fat outside. Thin on the outside, fat on the inside. Yeah. Thin out. I had it backwards. Thin outside, fat inside, tofi. That's a real thing. Super obvious with kids and adolescents. If, If you're looking at their stomach and they have a deep belly button, that means that they have a lot of that fat going on. So uh, I have two young kids and I see it all the time. Kids are eating way too much sugar. So thin on the ends, thin, in, thin outside, fat inside. Yep. Exactly. Totally. Yes. But the other side of that coin is metabolic healthy obesity. So MHO, because a lot of people are walking around and we have a, I'm not, I am trying really hard to say this sensitively, but we have a body positive culture going on right now that is not um, setting, setting our society up for optimal metabolic health. 
And when we're talking about metabolic healthy obesity, what that essentially is, is like one step away from metabolic syndrome, right? And that includes um, excess weight plus one other thing. So when people are metabolically healthy obese, they can have like an excess waist circumference plus like high blood sugar, high blood pressure, high triglycerides, low HDL. But if they don't have two, okay, right? But if we're checking fasting insulin, only 7% of people with obesity are considered metabolically healthy. So if we check fasting insulin, just to to let you know, 43% of people who would otherwise be considered a metabolically healthy obese person are now not. And so that is really important that we're not giving a false sense of security to people with obesity that they're metabolically healthy. Because what does that do to them? That sets them up for hardship down the road. And I've seen it as a geriatric physical therapist. We're we're doing our patients a disservice if we're not being honest with them about their health and not empowering them to be honest with themselves. It's not about the size or shape of your body. It's about how you feel and about your health. So I want to emphasize that because I don't want to come across as unsensitive. So we have to stop relying on the BMI scale and we have to start checking fasting insulin levels. That's going to start happening 40s to 50s, you're going to start to see those symptoms. And then if you really haven't been paying attention in your your 50s and 60s, that's what I call your pivotal decade. That's the time to make the changes. And if you don't, when after you're 60, you will feel the effects. So 50s to 60s, that's when you're going to get diagnosed with high blood pressure, with type 2 diabetes. That's when you're really going to start to notice signs of brain fog or memory issues. And then if you don't do anything about it, Jesse, the risk that you're not going to get off of medications increases. So by the time you're 60, if you haven't been taking care of yourself, you will have mobility problems. You're going to have arthritis. You're going to be getting your joints replaced. Oh, it's sad. It's, and you can tell I'm really passionate about this because so much can be prevented. Um, that's why I started this business in the first place was I said, oh my gosh, I'm working with these 80 and 90 year olds. And if I had worked with them 20 or 30 years earlier, they wouldn't need a geriatric physical therapist. They just needed some health coaching (laughs) earlier in life. They needed to be empowered with the right decisions, the right information, and they needed to follow through. So other things, other ways that this can manifest along this journey, Um, infertility, big deal. I don't know about you, but I have in my, maybe it's just because of my season in life. I know so many couples who are struggling with infertility right now. Um, so PCOS is highly, highly associated with insulin resistance. Um, it's polycystic ovarian syndrome. It can definitely affect fertility. Erectile dysfunction in men is associated with insulin resistance. So I think, just think about the quality of life, Jesse, like, it's, it's devastating. Insulin resistance is a devastating disease that can be prevented and it can be reversed, but you have to have the right information and the right support to do so. Otherwise you're just going to be doing one thing for four weeks and then stopping and then doing another thing for four weeks and stopping. Um, so I think that's kind of how it manifests. And then, you know, I like to like type two diabetes is just like a stop on the train on the insulin resistance train. It's just a stop. You can keep going all the way to death. Dementia is hugely associated with um, insulin resistance, especially vascular dementia and Alzheimer's disease. So certain types of dementia, are def- they have more of a hereditary component, but man, insulin resistance, if you can keep it low, you really preserve your cognitive health. So it's important that we talk about talk about this because a lot of people like to pretend like they're just going to be fine forever. And I can tell you, you're not. If you don't change your lifestyle, you're going to need a geriatric physical therapist. You're going to need a lift chair. You're going to need a horror lift. You're going to increase your risk for falls and fractures beyond multiple medications, but you don't have to be. And Jesse, I met this guy once. I have to tell this story. In home care geriatric physical therapy, uh, he was in his mid-70s. And I was going in for an evaluation. He'd had a couple amputations because of diabetes. He'd lost a few toes. He lost Uh, like the metatarsals on one foot, he was pretty much wheelchair bound. 
And I took a deep breath and I go, oh my gosh, his medication reconciliation is going to take like an hour because he's probably on so many medications. He was not on one diabetes medication. I said, what in the world is going on with you? You have amputations from diabetes. Why are you not on any diabetes medications? He goes, I told him I wasn't going to lose my leg. And I changed my diet. And so he adopted a low-carb diet and an intermittent fasting lifestyle, and he saved his leg. But what if he had done that 10 years sooner? He'd probably be walking. You know, so it's never too late. Even if you've already had amputations, you can still reverse your diabetes, but don't do it before it's too late. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. If you have a high fasting insulin, if you have excess abdominal fat, if you have high blood pressure, high triglycerides, low HDL, low energy, frequent carb cravings, those are all signs of insulin resistance. Insulin and inflammation are hand in hand.